So just a quick piece, uh, we will be announcing a couple of assets that the community has created last year. And we start off with uh, the industrial IoT protocol, the open source knowledge base that we have created. Can we have this uh, presentation uh, available, please, for that? And uh, Sham Purkaista is going to take this forward, uh, explain what we have done. Uh, he is the founder of Radio Studio, building content and POCs around use cases around emerging tech, IoT, cloud, AI, Web3. Sham, please, on stage, please. On behalf of the Thai Bangalore, and as part of the industrial SIG, uh, we just launched this uh, knowledge base on industrial IoT protocols. And this is available uh, as, a, as a GitHub repository, which you guys can uh, take a look. So basically, uh, yeah. so I'll just quickly run you through, through this, uh, I mean, just give you a brief of, about this uh, knowledge base. So basically, the motivation for this uh, knowledge base was, was based on several of our interactions that we had in Thai with the various uh, you know, experts as part of our fireside chats and webinars, where we got to know and everybody kind of sounded, out, sounded it out that most of the IIoT projects involve uh, you know, a lot of uh, interoperability issues with legacy protocols, right? So we're dealing with legacy protocols, we're dealing with serial-based protocols, IP protocols. So that was basically a motivation and that leads to a lot of you know, uh, confusions and hodgepodge, as we call it, and lack of clarity and confusion. So that's why we decided to come up with this directory of protocols, which also covers uh, some of the you know, legacy protocols like Modbus, as well as some of the you know, latest and the recent ones, which have been in adoption for the last four or five years, like MQTT and all that. And we built it as a protocol directory. So those of you who are intricately working on uh, IIoT, industrial IoT protocols and implementations, and especially the startups who are doing these various deployments across uh, the various industries, you can have a look at it. We have the resources in terms of the specifications, some of the use cases, comparisons, and I also welcome you guys to, and those of you who would like to contribute because we want to make it as a living repository. So please have a look. You can submit your issues and pull requests, and you can contribute more content in terms of software and hardware tools and additional architectural descriptions based on your use cases. So we'd like to welcome you to kind of have a look at it. And, and please feel free to reach out to us if you really want to contribute for this uh, repository. Uh, that's it from me. Thank you very much. So over to the next announcement. I would like to invite Raman. Raman is the senior technical advisor, technology organization at Scient. Raman has over 39 plus years of engineering industry experience across all different facets of IoT, industrial IoT, industry 4.0, across multiple verticals like transportation, industrial, and medical equipment. We would like to announce, please come on stage, Ravi, Venki, the other members of the 5G and Industrial Consortium. Please come on stage, please. Center stage, please. And we would request Raman to take us through a couple of slides explaining the key takeaways of this 5G enterprise private networks applications and use cases, please. Raman, please. Okay, thanks, Som, for this opportunity to essentially work with uh, Ravi and others in order to help build this uh, small white paper, Just which really Niranjan, helps us. Niranjan is here. Niranjan, yeah, come Niranjan. on stage, please. Yep. Come on stage, Come, 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 Niranjan. Come, come, come. You help to put things together in uh, record time. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So Niranjan is our intern, and he worked round the clock with Raman yep. last couple of days to shape up this uh, report. So even night, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, I used to see him active in making all the changes that is required that has come up in the last minute. So thanks, Niranjan, for all your support. I think uh, without your this thing, I think this would not have come to this shape for sure. So just to give a perspective of why we ventured into this, we were recently having discussions on various topics. Essentially, one of them was, this is the way I got introduced to the Type Forum, essentially from a point of view of being part of one of the uh, fireside chat session on IOT challenges. So from there, we essentially, when we had those regular discussions, we thought that why don't we come up with a kind of a white paper on this 5G private networks and how it is essentially helping the enterprise in order to take things forward. So we put together a piece of uh, document which essentially talks about the 5G architecture, uh, essentially from a private network standpoint, and also from a point of view of what are the right, what you call verticals, which we feel that 5G private network will be very useful. Because uh, 5G has been a big hype, but there are places where definitely 5G makes a big difference. So if we picked up the top five or six verticals, which essentially would make a difference for this. Uh, the verticals which essentially makes a difference is definitely one is in manufacturing, then second one is on mining, oil and gas, and transportation. When we talk about transportation, we talk about airports, seaports, and railways, all three together. So, so, I, I, so these are the six verticals which we essentially looked at, and we also looked at what was the key feature from a private network standpoint, which essentially makes it important for these use cases in these sectors to be successful. So definitely speed is a big area, low latency is a big area, high reliability and security. So with these into consideration, we looked at various use cases under the industries and we essentially said that for these use cases, which are essentially the factors that will lead us to making 5G as a compelling use case in order to implement these. And moving forward, we also looked at the various kinds of networks that are essentially going to be there as part of the 5G network, the various architectures and the technical benefits of using 5G private network. So this is essentially a kind of a very short uh, compilation, but we have done some extensive research looking at how essentially 5G private network is going to make a difference from a point of view of uh, helping uh, speed up the efficiency and productivity in an area of a kind of factory setup or from an autonomous operation or for that matter, any other thing that requires mission critical communication. So with this, I request whomsoever essentially is interested in looking at this, where they could essentially see value in for which particular vertical you'll essentially write set of uh, use cases which can make a difference. So with these things, I'll essentially want to wrap up this session, saying that look forward to uh, people contributing to this. Thanks a lot. So this has been a phenomenal collective work by Ravi, Venki, Raman, all of us kind of together. And I would encourage you guys uh, to kind of look and read the report. We, are, we have created essentially a framework that kind of starts any application, any industry applications or oil and gas mining application you have, you can map it to this framework and see its applicability for Wi-Fi 6.0, on, um, on, on 5G networks and so forth, right? So I'd encourage you to look through the report. It will be up on our website as well as all of our social media, LinkedIn, Twitter, and so forth very soon, and we'll be mailing you guys a copy to all the attendees as well. Last but not the least, uh, I would like to introduce Neil Roy. He is trained as a pilot with IAF, 25 years of internet experience as a professional entrepreneur and investor. He's passionate about technology. He is the principal advisor to the member of parliament on infrastructure and data security. And in his previous role, he was the founder of Jobs Ahead, which he sold to Monster India, and then spent 15 plus years with Times of India as their strategy head. I would request Neil, he is actually in Japan right now, but he's gonna be joining us um, on Zoom. Neil, can we see you? Yeah, hi, Song. Yes. can you hear me? And this is, we can hi, hear you loud and clear, and this is the report 
on the vision for smart airports in India, right, that we are launching this, this year. And all of this actually started from a few discussions that Neil and me, we had, right? So he is kind of have good connections to the Airport Authority of India and so forth. And we were all looking at what are the different IoT-related technologies, ER, VR-related, LPWAN, the uh, 5G technologies, where these can be deployed and so forth. But Neil started off with a fresh approach, saying that, hey, forget about technology. Let's look at what are the needs for an airport first? Who are the stakeholders? What are the needs? What are the current challenges they are facing? And how do does these technology items kind of overcome this? OK, so that's where this document is about, visions for smart airports for India. And this talks in detail, which Neil is going to cover next. Over to, can we get to the next uh, slide, please, for the vision for smart airports in India? Yeah, Neil, over to you. Yeah, right. Yeah, um, please. Can you see the slides? Can uh, you see the slides? Yes. yes yeah, sir. please yes, go I ahead. Can, but I'm not going, yeah, I'm not going to read through the slides since the slides are self-explanatory. So let me tell you a story. I grew up in an era, uh, I don't know how many of you remember an airline called Vayudu. I grew up in the airline of Vayudus. And, you know, I grew up in the Northeast. Uh, we used to go to the airport and watch the flight over above the sky. Some days it would land, some days it would not land. And those were very, very basic airports. Airports which basically had aircraft operation, air traffic controls, luggage ops, and passenger ops. Um, today, in, in a few years' time, India is going to have about 220 airports. And these are not airports I'm talking about, like um, a Delhi airport or a Bombay airport. These are very, very basic airports. And surprise, you, most of you will be very surprised. US has about 80,000 airports or today. But about 60% of the airports are the viable kind of airports we talked about. So now that's the opportunity in front of us. Do we want to build the, those kind of basic airports or we, do we want to create a template for the future? Because the new airports of the future are going to be a lot more complicated than what we had earlier, right? Airports are going to have diverse systems. They're going to require user-friendly uh, interface screens, uh, airline airport collaboration and decision making are going to be very, very important. They're going to demand secure data. Uh, they're going to strive to become carbon neutral. Uh, they're going to be huge amounts of uh, regulatory compliances. And this is the area where, you know, microservices with event driven architecture and AI driven uh, systems come in. And for all of these to come together, there's going to be a need for a very fast and secure data highway, a private data highway. And that's where I think a, a private 5G comes in, but not just as a, a technology, but with specific use cases being created here. Now, India needs to create a template that leads the world in airport infrastructure, sustainability and profitability. And we have the opportunity to do this. And this is exactly what the vision document lays out to be. Uh, uh, that's, that's in very, very brief, I wanted to cover. In case there are any questions, I'll be more than glad to answer those. Yes, so what we'll do is this document, again, will be floated out over to the folks. Sure. It talks in great detail about the different use cases around all of these stakeholders, right? There are six stakeholders we have identified for from an airport standpoint, and how each one of these use cases and applications kind of benefit each one of these stakeholders. Those have been kind of charted out. We have talked about the major benefits in terms of improved efficiency, passenger experience, uh, sustainability aspects, and so forth. And underneath, what we have done is three different aspects of the technologies that will enable a smart airport, the sustainability aspects that will enable a smart airport, and as well as the entire networks that Neil started with, a 5G network, an LPWAN network, and we have also added a couple of case studies out here from our startup.